Okay, uh, a pretty brief section today, but that's okay. I might even go so far as to say very brief. Um, but we are going to look at the alternating series test. <laughs> and um, we've seen alternating series before, not by that name, of course. We didn't use the name, but let's just go A2, A3, A4. An alternating series is one where the series alternate size. So Grandy's series, for example, one minus one plus one minus one plus one, and so on. And um, we especially see alternating series in the context of the ratio test, which does not require the terms to be positive. Um, the alternating series test is, um, is stunningly simple when you see it. It's um, maybe not as useful as you'd want it to be. Um, the main alternating series we're going to see are something called Taylor series. And with Taylor series, you still have to use the ratio test to get information that, that we don't get from the alternating series test. But The alternating series test is, um, again, we can think of the easiest way to make something alternate is to put a negative one to the N there. Um, and then, you know, if, if you want it to start with a positive number, or you want it to start with a negative number, then, you know, de obviously depending where the series starts. Here, this n minus one causes us to start with a positive number because negative one to the zero is positive. Whereas just n would cause us to start with a negative number because negative one to the first is negative. So we mess around with that power to decide which terms are positive and which are negative, but they're alternating, hence the name. So if, So if these terms are going to zero and these terms in fact are going to zero monotonically is the fancy word, but if every term is less, than the term before it, then this series converges. So, um, this one of the great weaknesses of this test that causes it not to be as helpful as it might be um, 
is it shares sort of the same weakness of the nth term test in the alternate direction. The nth term test can tell us that a series diverges, but it can never be used to show convergence. The alternating series test can be used to show convergence, but it can never be used to show divergence. Um, I guess another kind of aspect of the alternating series test is, is how do you demonstrate that this is true? Um, this is probably straightforward. You take a limit you probably end up using L'Hopital's rule, or maybe you just go to Desmos and take a look at the graph. It's a little informal, but it works 99 times out of 100. But to show that a series is decreasing, you know, it might be easy to show, it might be hard to show. Um, Let's look at a case where the alternating series test just works and is perfect and we don't run into trouble. Um, I, at some point, not as something for you to commit to memory, but I've mentioned that the so-called alternating harmonic series is convergent. Um, and when I said that at the time, I just sort of said, well, we're going to have to kind of take my word for this because we don't have the tools to show it yet. But the limit as n goes to infinity, so remember when we're doing this test, we're ignoring the negative one part and we're just looking at the one over n. This limit is zero. And then, Again, it's sort of, it's definitely true that one is bigger than a half, is bigger than a third, is bigger than a fourth, is bigger than a fifth, and so on. Um, the way you would formalize this, I guess, is that if f of n is one over n, then f prime of n is negative one over n squared. Well, n squared is positive, so one over n squared is positive, so you have a negative positive number, which is negative. And then you'd hopefully recall your calculus one, that a, um, a negative derivative means the function is decreasing. So it's just getting smaller and smaller as you go from left to right to one to two to three to four to five. Um, there are situations, I mean, textbooks don't seem to like to confess this, and there are good reasons and bad reasons for that. But, um, but, um, Sometimes if you're sort of wondering if the alternating series test is going to work, 
there is really nothing for it but just to go to a calculator or go to a graphing utility. Um, so, for example, let's see. Here's something where you kind of think maybe the alternating series test doesn't work, but it's hard to know for sure. And I mean, the reason the alternating series test might not work is that that sign of X is jumping around. It's going down and it's going up and it's going down. So let's sort of try to figure this out just looking at a graph. And I mean, when I said there are good reasons and bad reasons, you know, the legitimate reason is that graphs can be deceptive. Um, but see this. actually looks kind of hopeful point uh wait what am i doing why am i i don't want maximum values i mean i would not probably use the alternating series test here without some kind of okay there you go. So in general, this curve is going down. I mean, you sort of look at the trend. It starts big here. It gets smaller and smaller. But this sign of X is causing it to bump. And because of that, you see the fourth term is going to be bigger than the third term. And this pattern is going to keep repeating. Like, let's see if I can, x equals six, x equals seven. This seventh term is a little bigger than the sixth term. So the series might converge or it might diverge. Um, you have to be careful because the fact that the alternating series test has failed does not tell us that the series diverges. It just means that we have no information. And I don't mind uh, standing in front of you and saying that I have no idea whether this test diverges or whether this series converges or diverges, and I don't know what test you could use to figure it out. Um, Integral test doesn't work because it's not monotonic. Um, let's see, ratio test. The ratio test does not work great when you have trig functions. If we use the ratio test, we're going to wind up with like the limit as just, just this is sorry, this is like, I am so used to Taylor series, which we're going to introduce next week that I keep wanting to have X's. But um, if, if we use the ratio test, we're going to wind up with something like this. And we're not going to know how to take this limit. 
because this is indeterminate, but it's not infinity over infinity, and it's not zero over zero, so we can't use L'Hopital's rule. So, I mean, I expect that someone at some point has figured this out, but just using the tools of a Calc 2 class, I don't know how you'd go about this. Okay. And that's going to be, I mean, I'm not going to keep you the whole time because there's really not much more to say about this test, but uh, that's going to be sort of the next few examples, I guess. I'll put something on the board. It might converge. It might not. The ratio test might work or it might not. And we'll at least try to investigate the question. Um, n squared over n factorial. So here's a situation where you um you really need to have some intuition about the factorial. Um, to make this work. I mean, this is going to converge. It's going to converge by the alternating series test. It, it would also converge, incidentally, very nicely using the ratio test. At least I say that. That's what I believe is true. But it's sort of hard to formalize. Um, Two frames ago, I said, well, you can take the derivative and you can look at the derivative and because the derivative is negative, this thing is decreasing. Well, n factorial, as we understand n factorial, doesn't have a derivative because it's not, it's not, you know, a function on the real numbers. You can only plug in the integers. And because the derivative is defined in terms of a limit, you're looking at what happens near what you're trying to take the derivative of. It doesn't work for factorial. Um, it will be interesting to see whether Desmos is willing to graph this for us or to try to graph this or what Desmos is going to do. Oh. Well, that would have been nice, but it wasn't two factorial, it was x factorial. So Desmos is doing something funky. Um, Desmos is using the fact that there's, there's a very fancy way to extend the definition of the factorial to all of the real numbers. And if we use that fancy extension, we can graph it and we can just looking at the graph, it, it sure looks as if this thing is always decreasing. You know, we could, or rather not always decreasing, but again, and this is sort of a, an application of something I talked about weeks ago, when we asked whether a series converges or diverges, we can always just delete the first few terms if it helps, like the series, the sum from one, 
to infinity is going to converge if and only if the sum from, from let's say, three to infinity converges. So sorry if that was a little confusing where I was saying, oh, this looks like it's always decreasing and you're sitting there and thinking, what are, what are you talking about? It's clearly increasing here because when we're talking about convergence, we can just delete the first few terms if it's convenient it to us. And if we delete that hill, it certainly now looks as if it's decreasing. So our calculator, I'm going, I would place a small bet that our calculator is not going to graph this for us the way Desmos does, although I've never actually tried, so maybe I'm about to have a fool made of me. Okay, our calculator doesn't know what the heck to do with that factorial, it just generates a blank graph, but we could go to the table and I do not want to manually scroll up. So I'm going to go to the table settings and say that I want to start at one. Now we could look at the table and we do see that this jump from one to two, but again, we can start at three or we can start at four. That's not a real issue. And I mean, if we look at this, it sure seems like this is monotonically decreasing. In fact, it looks like it's decreasing quite quickly. You know, from 41 to 42, um, the decimal place moves twice to the left. So this is a situation where it all sort of depends on how formal or how informal your being looks like. This converges using the alternating series test. And here's why I have to say, well, it looks like this is happening instead of saying this is happening because we are just lose using graphs. And I mean, our common sense tells us what's happening. Our common sense tells us that we're not going to reach 500 trailing and suddenly the graph that's been decreasing constantly is going to start increasing again. But we are making you know, we are making an assumption. So the alternating series test sort of tells us what we think is happening. The ratio test would allow us to put this on firmer ground. We could use the ratio test and, um, well, let's use the ratio test.
So negative one to the n plus one. n plus one square over n factorial. Nope, that would have been a sad thing. I'd have gotten to the end of the problem and um got in completely the wrong answer and then what happened? Um, N plus one factorial. Then in the bottom, negative one to the N, N squared over N factorial. Take the limit as n goes to infinity of. So we've got negative one to the n plus one over negative one to the n. Um, we have got n plus one squared over n squared, and we've got n factorial over n plus one factorial. And um, I'm going to move to the next frame, but What, what am be, I doing? Should that be n squared? It, it absolutely shows me. Thank you for, for pointing that out. I mean to switch to the horrible yellow for that. Um, so I'm going to go to the next frame. I'm going when I do. We can. limit as n goes to infinity. I'm going to do a little simplification. Again, um, I've said before that one of the reasons that um, we want to have products and not sums and differences when we use the um, ratio test is that we're going to wind up with an absolute value and the absolute value works well for products. It doesn't work well for sums and differences. In particular, the absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. So, and then negative one to some power, the absolute value is one. Negative one to some power, the absolute value is one. So those go away. And just because we've seen this like, four separate times by now. So this is n times n minus one times n minus two times n minus three and so on. In the bottom, we've got n plus one times n times n minus one, times n minus two, times n minus three, and so on. Everything cancels except that n plus one. Um, so one over n plus one is going to zero, um, which is probably going to cause the limit to be zero. 
But we need to be a little careful about that our kind of argument. Because if it turned out this was going to infinity, well, infinity and zero can combine to give us anything. Um, that is not the case as it happens, though. The easiest way to approach this is to foil everything out. At least I think so, because we're using L'Hopital's rule. And if we didn't foil everything out, you know, we'd have to worry about the chain rule. But however you approach it, you wind up with one. So one times one over infinity. It's zero. Zero is less than one, so the ratio test says that this series definitely converges. And that, in my opinion, ended up being a nice example because it illustrates sort of both the pros and the cons of the alternating series test. I mean, the pros are that we can just sort of look at a graph or look at a table and with like 99.999% .99 certainty say, oh, this is definitely converging. But it's not definitely converging because you could look at the first 5,000 terms and then the 5,000 and first term could break everything. It could start going up instead of going down. Not very likely, you know, I'm not pretending I think that's likely, but to really, formalize this, we ended up using a different test. We ended up using the ratio test. And that's the alternating series test, and that's the convergence tests, which, to, I mean, it, in my mind, are not the exciting parts of chapter 10. Um, so next week, we're going to start asking what I think the interesting, or I should say more interesting questions are, which is, okay, but what's all this for? A, um, a question that I think you know, when you're half an hour into a homework assignment and struggling with the tests probably occurs to everyone, but this really is applied math and we'll see applications going forward. So until then, that will of course be Tuesday because Monday is a uh, great. I hope you both have, well, both. I hope you all have um, lovely weekends and see your family or whatever you're doing. <laughs>